whole. Theosophist Alice Bailey concurs, quote, the true communist platform is sound. Thus, it is not surprising why Zeitgeist advocates a similar system, as the connection they have to Theosophy and the New Age has already been established. Zeitgeist is merely the fulfillment of the New Age agenda, yet they are not telling you that. So the Theosophists and New World Order advocates would love nothing more than for people to join the Zeitgeist movement. In fact, at 47 minutes and 25 seconds into the Zeitgeist orientation lecture, Peter Joseph cites a quotation of Carl Pearson. What is interesting is that the man that Joseph admiringly appeals to to support his worldview, Carl Pearson, was a notorious eugenicist and social Darwinist who advocated war against certain races. He was a socialist and contemporary of Karl Marx. In fact, Theodore M. Porter in his work Carl Pearson, The Scientific Life in the Statistical Age states, quote, Pearson's appreciation of Marx was real especially in early 1881. In his first essay on socialism, he called Marx, quote, one of the most extraordinary characters which this century has produced, unquote. New World Order research involving lectures, radio addresses, and writing used to be conducted by people such as William Cooper, Fritz Springmeier, John Todd, Randall N. Baer, and Kent Hovind. The unifying factor in all of these people was that they were all Christians. They would expose the New World Order and its New Age Luciferian communist aims. They would promote belief in Jesus Christ and the Word of God and tell people to resist the mystery religions of Theosophy and Freemasonry while exposing them. However, all of these men have either been murdered or framed and jailed, silenced. William Cooper was shot dead in 2001 as he was ambushed. Fritz Springmeier was framed, discredited, and jailed. Randall N. Bear had his car ran off of a mountain pass. John Todd was framed, discredited, jailed, and then murdered. Kent Hovind was singled out for tax evasion and then jailed. Okay, so Fritz Springmeier, uh, you knew him, right? Yes. Okay, uh, so you got some letters from him, is that? Yes, when Fritz, uh, when they put Fritz in prison, and there's been, you know, he, it was pretty much a trumped up charge of, I think they, marijuana or something, talk of robbing the bank, this type of stuff. He got put in prison and uh, I started corresponding with him at that point because I had read several of his books and actually talked to him personally on several occasions. And we really, all we could do at that point is correspond. Right. So I've got several handwritten letters from him. And uh, the last time I had heard from him was several years back. And uh, he had been in a, it wasn't his fault, uh, and I think it might have been arranged where um, he was in a fight. He didn't fight back. Yeah. The guy came and he told me that he was just using his head like a soccer ball, essentially. Really? Oh, it was sad. Wow. It was sad. And you know, Fritz, he never complained in these letters. Yeah. He never, uh, it wasn't like he was like, oh, woe is me, I'm in prison and this or that. He always had a great attitude. He was trying to help other people in there. Yeah. I believe he had a ministry going. Amen. And, um, you know, I, I can't say enough good about Fritz Springer. Now that the Christian New World Order researchers have been silenced, the truth movement has been infiltrated by people who purport to be against the New World Order, yet they advocate the New Age religion, a new utopia, and they all speak against Christianity and the Bible. The people who took over the truth movement and who are allowed to live and teach the public, such as Jordan Maxwell, Michael Tesserion, Peter Joseph, David Icke, and others, all of these people have one unifying factor. They are all strictly against Christianity, and they are all heavily associated with the New Age, Theosophy, and Freemasonry. I think Jordan Maxwell is somebody um, who is just deceived. It's my personal opinion, and I could be wrong about this, that Jordan Maxwell is not uh, a paid disinformation agent or he's not uh, somebody that is a high-level Satanist. I think that Jordan Maxwell is like many of us in the truth movement. Uh, we have uh, been deceived by a lot of very clever disinformation. In his case, Blavatsky and the Secret Doctrine and that whole concept that, that really got him on a roll. Jordan Maxwell um, 
is a person who believes that the entities that he's involved with, that he had experiences with in the desert, etc., were Pleiadians. And I think that he thinks that they chose him to uh, teach the world certain things. So in that context, it's very hard for him or really anybody to um, break free of that paradigm because in that paradigm he gets to be this super special individual and we all are, are uh, uh, vulnerable to that. If we have supernatural experiences where, where entities tell you that you are the chosen one and that you're going to do something, it's very hard not to believe them because that's what you want. And so it's very hard, uh, and, and of course, in doing so, in, in thinking, okay, these guys, these Pleiadians are on my side, when in actuality they're demons, they would coax him to do certain things, like he mentioned later, to go into uh, you know, these seances or whatever. In doing that, they can have more control over him, because they're demons and they have a, situ a, a system to get more control over a person. And if they do that, then he can uh, start to be used more thoroughly by them, and he can do exactly what he promised them that he would do, to be a channel for them. And that's what his life has been about, being used, despite his, uh, despite his pr probably very good intentions, he has been a tool of the New World Order. And so my, my view is um, that Jordan Maxwell uh, ends up promoting the New World Order. In that, particular, um, in that particular session, he goes on to say that the um, New World Order, uh, that a, a bad time is coming, but that time must come in order for it to be uh, uh, destroyed to bring the birth of the New World Order. Out of chaos comes order. So he was saying that the, the old system must be destroyed to come the new system. And that is exactly what uh, the double-headed phoenix rising out of the ashes is all about. The old system of the New World Order is what we see building up all around us. It is going to get really, really bad, and, and it, it, but it is going to be destroyed, um, and in a sense, uh, because it, that faucet is being run by evil. We all know that the things that are happening to the world right now are, are being done because of evil. So if evil is causing all those things, evil can also turn that faucet off at just the right time in order to make it seem like whoever stopped it stopped it and therefore is the savior. So that new system will seem like the utopia that Jordan Maxwell says we all need to wait for. It's interesting that he says that at that time is that that's when the, you know, the aliens or gods are coming back to say to stop it. That's the deception. That's, what's, that's what the people in the, um, um, have been saying of the occultists, saying that that's what the demons are going to do for a long time. It's, it's easy to be seduced, especially in Tassarian's case, who was raised since 11 years old saying that this is truth. He was raised by Rosicrucians, raised by um, these people by his own admission. He was doing the tarot cards at the age of 11 by his own biography. This is the example of being raised in a system, being told one thing is true and, and the other thing is, is not. Um, it's, it's biased is what it is, but, but nevertheless, I don't want to, I think in that reason, these people deserve our sympathy. One way or the other, they are deceived. Even if they are intentionally doing it, which is possible in the case of Tassarian, and it's possible in the case of Maxwell too, I, I suppose, um, even if they're intentionally doing it, they have to deserve our um, sympathy and even our prayers, because even if they're intentionally doing it, they're still deceived. Uh, but, but to say, but to wrap that up, uh, Blavatsky and everything that came out of that was what First Timothy calls the doctrines of demons, and in the last days people will uh, believe. The New Age and all of that was birthed by Blavatsky, and the New Age ideas um, will be used to bring in this new world order. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. Unless nations will agree to work together to tackle these cross-border challenges posed by population growth, overconsumption of resources, and environmental degradation, the prospects for a decent life on our planet will be threatened. But this callous disregard for the right to life of every human on the face of the earth has been predicted before in the New Testament. John was moved to write, quote, Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service, unquote. The New World Order, ladies and gentlemen, will sail in on a sea of blood.